A natural hazard is any naturally occurring phenomena, it tends to be extreme in nature, that has the potential to negatively impact people. They can be geological, like landslides or earthquakes. They can be biological, like infestations or disease outbreaks. They can include wildfires. So I am a scientist who looks primarily at how human and biophysical factors interact to affect the, the patterns, um, the processes, and the trends in natural disturbances, including wildfires. I'm interested in studying wildfire because it's an integral part of life. Uh, many of our ecosystems here in Colorado depend on fire, and human existence depends on fire as well. We use combustion every day to prepare our food, to drive our cars, to heat our homes, and so, we're inextricably linked to fire, but on the other hand, it poses an extreme risk to us. The record for the most destructive wildfire ever was broken twice in 2012. And then that record was broken again in 2013. So the current record for the most destructive wildfire was that 2013 uh, Black Forest fire. The climatological conditions were really conducive to burning in those years. So the winter snowpack was relatively low. And then in the actual fire season, relative humidity was low, precipitation was low, temperatures were high. So Colorado in general is susceptible to burning because it's covered in vegetation, from the grasslands in the plains area to the shrublands and the forest in the foothills and the high country. Colorado also has a dry climate, which means that that vegetation can become a fuel load as it dries out. And humans are responsible for most fire ignitions, but Colorado does have a higher than average number of lightning storms, which means even in places where there aren't people, there are ignition sources with lightning. There are a variety of ways that scientists study wildfire. Um, one way is that they'll light controlled burns and they can observe the physical process of fire during that controlled burn. So they might look at, for example, how fire moves from one branch to another. Um, another common way of studying fire is to predict fire probability, uh, fire risk, or fire characteristics. So we take information and data on fires that have already occurred and pair that with factors that we think might drive fire behavior, climate, for example, vegetation type. So it's important to note that wildfires don't always result in a natural disaster. Um, in Colorado, wildfires are an integral part of our ecosystems. Many plants, for example, rely on wildfire even for seed dispersal. So some plants, for example, have serotonous cones and they won't release their seeds until they're exposed to extreme heat. In the fire science community, we often talk about fire being controlled by three things, by ignition, by vegetation, and by moisture. So there needs to be sufficient vegetation or biomass um, to burn for a fire to occur. That vegetation or biomass needs to be dry enough to burn. Um, and then a spark needs to exist for a fire to occur. Colorado does have a dry climate, and that can be exacerbated by anthropogenic climate change, particularly climate change that decreases winter snowpack and fire season precipitation and increases fire season temperatures. The risk that wildfires pose to people and property is growing as more people move into forested areas that were once largely uninhabited. Um, these areas are known as the wildland urban interface, or the, or the WUI, and they're where people and vegetation occur side by side. A wildfire watch means to be prepared. It means that fire weather conditions or conditions that are suitable to, to wildfire, particularly extreme fire behavior, are not currently occurring and they're not imminent, but that fire weather could occur in the near future, so, so be prepared. A fire warning means to take action. So a fire warning means that fire weather is currently existing or it's imminent. In the event of a wildfire warning, get to safety right away. Um, the first thing to do is to tap into emergency alerts, either through the television or the radio, so that you're up to date on really important information. Um, the second is that if you are asked to evacuate, do so as soon as possible. Um, there are also actions that people can take uh, prior to a wildfire even occurring that can reduce the risk of wildfire on their own property. Um, one is to create defensible space around your home, so manage the fuel loads around your individual property. You can also use construction materials that are, are fire-wise. And then also it's important to have a, an evacuation plan with your family and to actually practice that plan. We know that people are not equally affected by disasters, uh, including wildfire. And in order to protect those people in our communities, it's important that we know where they are and what their barriers to being able to escape if they need to, uh, what those barriers might be, so that we can um, provide aid as necessary.